I think many people will applaud Good you for the noble idea of getting more offenders that have done their time back into work. Nobody wants the huge bill for reoffending. But why do you think employers would want to do this? What would be the protection for them if, for instance, a crime was then perpetrated against them, if they took in somebody that then stole from them or whatever? And what would be the incentive? Well, in terms of getting people back into work, it's, it's clearly important in terms of bringing down reoffending. But prisoners can make excellent employees, and there are many employers, the likes of Greggs, Holfords, Timpsons, who have got a very good experience of taking people on and them turning into excellent employees. And I've met many employers who have given that message. So I think it is important that employers understand that there's an opportunity here. We're in an environment where employment levels are very full. There are shortages in a number of areas. And you know, prisoners can make excellent employees. We need to do all we can to provide uh, prisoners with that support. Um, but also, we want to encourage employers on for taking on those uh, ex-offenders, um, giving them a chance to turn their lives around, but also providing a source of, of, of good employees. So one of the eye-catching uh, ideas that you're suggesting is a, a national insurance exemption or holiday of some sort. How would that work, Mr Gore? Well, it's something we set out in the Conservative Party manifesto last year, and the details of that will be set out by the Treasury. It's a tax measure, so it would be announced in a, in a budget. But the basic idea would be that employers, when they pay uh, national insurance contributions, the jobs tax, if you like, in respect of, uh, uh, of uh, ex-offenders who are out of prison, um, that they would, would not be paying uh, that, that amount for the first year or so. So that's a financial incentive. But it's also, I think, really important that we, if you like, change the culture. As I said earlier, there are some employers who have got fabulous experience of taking on uh, ex-offenders, ex-prisoners, um, but there are other employers who hold off from doing that. Um, that's, I don't think, good for them. It's not good for society and it's not good for the people whose lives we need to turn around to ensure that they don't offend again. And the headlines today about the NHS desperately needing this increase in taxes to pay for the NHS. And what you're suggesting now is an exemption or holiday on national insurance contributions to pay for or to, to help inspire employees to take on uh, ex-offenders and try and get them into the workforce. How are we going to cover the cost? Because I'd imagine that those national insurance contributions that are being paid by these companies that are already uh, employing these offenders are hugely important to the government. Well, it's a, it's a policy that we announced in our manifesto, and as with all tax and tax measures, they're announced in budgets, and uh, uh, so not for me to sort of set that out. Obviously, it's an area where we uh, would need to, to find the money, it but it's worth but bearing in mind. Mr Gork, you can't just well, come on I, and roll out something without giving us some re, re, idea. Re you've, you've given us the same answer twice now that you've yeah, put in the manifesto. Say, it's the, it's the, yeah, it's the chance that it's going to come up with the detail. We need to understand how it might work. The point I was making is that reoffending costs this country £15 billion a year. If we can find ways of bringing down reoffending, uh, that is good for society and that's good for the economy. So that's the approach we're taking. What we are setting out today is the ways in which we are uh, encouraging employers to, in terms of taking people on, in general, pointing out the advantages. We're setting out how we're going to provide better education in prisons uh, than, we, uh, uh, than we have done before, more focused on on work and how we use time uh, when people are sentenced in jail to prepare for a life in work and that includes uh, for example releasing them on temporary license to go out and work in the day and then come back to prison uh, at night. All these are steps designed to ensure that we get people uh, who have been in prison into work because we've done really well as a country in terms of reducing worklessness um, but we've still got a long way to go with uh, ex-prisoners okay. and that's what we've got to focus on. Okay. How are you going to fund some of these education programmes? Because we do many, many interviews here on Good Morning Britain about how stretched the prison service is, how understaffed it is, you know, how money isn't there for the programmes that could be in place right now. So there's no detail here whatsoever of any extra money to make any of this happen, let alone save the service as it is at the moment. 
It's, it's about refocusing our education budget, moving away from, um, frankly, sort of low-level qualifications that have not proven to be that helpful for getting people into work, much more focused about uh, uh, work, uh, giving governors greater discretion and control as to how they spend their education budget, uh, who they uh, use to provide education, taking into account the local labour market, you know, what's available in, in the area. Um, so that, we think, is, is important. So it's about spending the money that we do spend better. But just one point to make on staffing, you know, we are increasing the staff within prisons. Uh, since October 2016, we've increased staff by over 3,000. We're continuing to recruit prison officers. Um, it is important that we've got the, the right numbers in there. There are challenges that we face in prisons. I'm the first to accept that, and the additional staff that we're taking on will help us to do that.